and I'm pretty sure most of that information is in here too. I started the par I helped start the paraphernalia industry. I helped start the militias. According to the ADL, hell, I was uh, I, I was advertising for the militias in uh, Free American. You're damn right, I was. You're right, I was. I certainly was. And by the way, it's large print too for you nearsighted folks. It's got uh, the whole history of the Rothschilds and. Uh, It's got my publisher's column from the last Free American. I have spent much of my life fighting the New World Order. The role of the Illuminati and the Masons continually pop up, and although most Masons, like Ron Paul, are basically good people, the upper echelon know they're working for Lucifer. Here's what uh, Albert Pike, Master Mason, Confederate General, predicted in three predicted three world wars. Here's some extracts from a letter he wrote showing how three world wars have been planned for many generations. The first world war must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and making and of making that country a forces, fortress for atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. To end, at the end of this war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy other governments in order to weaken the religions. That was just the First World War. And they did kill the Tsar, 1917 I believe, and they gave us the Federal Reserve in 1913 and they financed the whole killing and the uh, revolution in Russia with our money, with our tax money. That's you know how many millions and billions of dollars? Folks, what's happening right now is that all, all this crime, the illegal aliens are coming here because they know they got to commit crimes because just being here is a crime, so they're already criminals. Bring them on in. Bring them on in. Let them on in here. The sheriffs are trying to stand up against it. I'm trying to serve. Uh, I'm trying to back up the sheriffs. I'll back up Sheriff Richard Mack. I'll try to get him on my show shortly. Richard Mack is forming an organization as a sheriff. So we are doing this. We are. We are fighting, but we need your help. I need your help. I need you to buy this book. I need you to understand what's happening here. Now, like I said, I started. I helped start the paraphernalia industry. I did help start the militia. ADL is actually right about that. They just don't tell you that I started it in the governor's office. Governor Gary Johnson, who's running for president, and he probably won't get it because if he got it, he would have banished this whole ban on him. They used the marijuana laws. They demonized marijuana. They demonized this little bit of herb here, which may or may not be marijuana. This could be just stage stuff. Because it's really hard to tell, isn't it? Gee, God, I, I had this woman run me and tell, tells me how people go crazy smoking marijuana. So, so this must be oregano, because I'm not crazy. They don't want you smoking pot because it destroys their ability to control you. Kathy O'Brien, who wrote Transformation of America, and was on my show a number of times, said that she could do heroin, she could do cocaine. She delivered heroin to George Bush while he was, uh, which he used while he was molesting her daughter. And. Uh, She couldn't smoke pot, and and I did smoke pot with her and Mark Phillips at one of my conventions that I put on. I was doing conventions. I had magazines. I had I had books read. These books ready to come out. I had two magazines. I had this radio show on Worldwide Shortwave. And by the way, if you're out there, you ought to call. WWCR there in Nashville and tell them you wanna you'd like to have Clay Douglas back on the show. I'm talking to him. I'm negotiating with him, and uh, yeah, Henri, let uh, let Saint Warrior stay in here. Don't kick him out yet. I might want to talk to him again. He had a chance to be on my show and blew it. So you guys leave him in, and, and folks, 
if you they don't want this book out there they don't want this book out here because it brings so many things together they try to put you apart they try to break oh oh please smoke pot <laughs> well look folks if a man with a badge can come up to you hands up against that wall I gotta search you what's that on your pocket is that is that marijuana what is that what is, is that cocaine is that it, it, ooh is that you got a prescription for this pill then you are in a police state. I wrote a book 40 years ago that will be coming out next year. Next year. Maybe. Maybe. If I sell the books I wrote last year. But this book that I started 40 years ago is about both the religions, about the Judaism. My character is named Solomon. He wears a six-pointed star with a marijuana leaf on it and and that's uh, and he is a presidential advisor backer in a country where victimless crimes have been abolished and the government's run the way it's supposed to be run own tariffs own you know the, what we idealize I wrote about 40 years ago that's right. And if it was legal, if you could grow, if you could grow a pot plant in your backyard, you like smoke. Okay, great. Go plant this seed. Go plant this seed out back. And when you do that, when you do that, then you don't need to buy any drugs from a drug smuggler. So the profit margin, based on uh, these uh, sending these. Uh, immigrants up, illegal immigrants up with coyotes packing up 50 pounds of pot on their back. They're going to come up here and they're going to move into a neighborhood and they're going to start collecting welfare. Ooh, yeah. They're going to start correct collecting welfare and they're going to become your local drug dealer. That's just right. That's, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And if, it, if you grow it in your backyard, well, there wouldn't be the profit motive in there. And actually, you know, this whole war on drugs has only succeeded in putting 50 million Americans behind bars. Putting them behind bars. Why? So we can spend $50,000 to, 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 and put it back into these corporate owned, operated, prisons a little strange wouldn't you say well it's not strange if you understand that they fought wars with China over the opium just like we were trying to tell you just like I've been telling you folks this is that the CIA the Mossad are the ones bringing the drugs in they're the ones uh, our armies are occupying and controlling the uh, fields over there, the opium poppy. They're protecting the opium poppy. And what are we doing? Our Republican leadership is going around trying to start more wars. Pat Buchanan says a vote for Mitt Romney or Newt Gingrich is a vote for yet another unfunded war of choice, this time with a nation I ran three times as large and populous as Iraq. Mitt says if elected he'll move carriers to the per Persian Gulf and prepare for war. Newt is even more hawkish. America should continue taking out Iran's nuclear assassinate, uh, uh, scientists, assassinating them, but military action will probably be needed. And by the way, they're doing that already. The Mossad's taking credit for it. Mossad's taking credit for it. And uh, Rick Santorum has already called for U.S. strikes. If, uh, but Pat Buchanan asked a person pretty good questions. And not that I'm a, a huge fan of Pat Buchanan, but he gets closer to the truth, kind of like Ron Paul than most of us. He said, uh, Netanyahu is forever reminding us an existential threat. Our, uh, Iran represents that. 
Why does not Israel itself with hundreds of nuclear weapons deal with it? Bibi's in action speak louder than Bibi's words. He wants the Americans to do it. And for the uh, retired head of Mossad, Mir Dagon, calls attacking Iran the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. He means stupid for Israel. Why? Because an Israeli attack would be costly in planes and pilots and only back Iran's nuclear program. Such a preemptive strike would unify Iranians behind the regime. Moreover, Israel would be inviting Tehran's Hezbollah to rain rockets down on Israel, igniting uh, another of the uh, bloody Lebanon wars that uh, Israel desperately uh, was desperate to end the last time. As for the United States, the only way we could eliminate Iran's nuclear program would be days of air and missile strikes. Iran could retaliate by cutting off oil exports and mining the Gulf of Hormuz, crippling the world price of oil, and hurtling the European Union and United States into recession. Iran could also turn Hezbollah loose on Americans in Lebanon, urge Shia, Shias to attack U.S. troops, diplomats, uh, civilians in Bahrain, Iraq and Afghanistan, and here in the United States. No one knows how this would end. A U.S.-Iran war could force us to march to Tehran to remove the Islamic regime and scourge the country to ensure that there was a, it was shorn of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, for an Islamic regime that survived, a U.S. war would be hell-bent on acquiring the bomb to pay us back. Yet we lack a large enough army to occupy Iran. This is Pat Buchanan. Why should thousands more Americans have to die or come home to be fitted for metal limbs so Israel can remain the sole proprietor of a nuclear weapon from Morocco to Afghanistan? And where is the hard evidence that Iran is acquiring nukes? My uh, my sources say they have they got three of them, but uh, so does North Korea, South Korea, North Korea. So does uh, a lot of the countries that are falling in Europe right now. Again, just like Albert Pike predicted, and all that's in my book in uh, Mystery Babylon. Now let's do something else. Very good. Since to sell drugs to Americans to support themselves. And this continued right down from Southeast Asia through the Mujahideen, through the Contras. Now, that Contra thing that they're mentioning, I mean, we documented that in Operation Watchtower, contained in my book, Mystery of Babylon, New World Order Unveiled. It's all there. Now, this is all about the drugs, and they want the drugs illegal here so they can put your children and you in prison and your families and destroy you and seize your homes. It's all about the money. If we grow, uh, my answer to it is Liberty Villages, folks. If we grow our own food, and you can grow hemp in the backyard in that back 40 back there and restore the soil and, and have a plant, and you can have people working right on that farm to turn that into all kinds of products, fibers, fabric, rope. We don't have to buy a rope from the Philippines or the Chinese or, or our Nikes. Why do we have to buy our Nikes from, from China? Because, folks, the, the money that is being ripped out from you is being sent overseas to finance the whole global government, the New World Order. We're, we've got foreign aid going out, no foreign aid going out to 150 countries, including China, including Libya, while Muammar Gaddafi was still there. We're financing the regimes that are, are, are willing to work with the World Bank, willing to put their people in debt. I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to be responsible. I won't take a responsibility for wars. This is what's happening right now. And this drugs are part of it. They want to. Uh, can you imagine being thrown in prison for doing this? I was. When it was in a life sentence in Texas. I went to prison for smoking something that you can smoke in 15 states now. If you get a farmer, big farmer's permission. If you get big farmer's permission. Otherwise. You could be working on these labor camps just like all the Jews that they talk about. But how was the heroin smuggled into the United States? Yes. One of America's most gruesome secrets is that during the Vietnam War, heroin was smuggled into the United States 
by hiding it inside the body bag of dead American soldiers. By the end of the 1960s, one-third of U.S. soldiers in Vietnam and close to one million United States citizens were hooked on heroin. Drugs like LSD, mescaline, marijuana, and hashish also swamped the streets and college campuses of America. Who or what turned America's youth onto these illegal drugs? Celebrity anti-war activists like Aldous Huxley, Timothy Leary, Allen Ginsberg, and Bertrand Russell sold America's youth on acid rock, tripping out, and one world government. Their financing came from the Warburg Banksters and IPS, Institute for Policy Studies. Over 100 million doses of LSD that hit the streets of America were purchased by Timothy Leary and Alan Dulles through S.G. Warburg's Sandoz AD Pharmaceutical Company in Switzerland. Free sample-sized packages of acid were handed out not only on college campuses, but at rock concerts, where musicians persuaded millions of fans to get high. drug culture blame parents, teachers, law enforcement, and everybody except the people behind it all, namely the Rothschild Warburg Banksters and their committee of 300. According to Dr. John Coleman, who wrote the story of the committee of 300, the Beatles rock group were brought to America by the Tavistock Institute. Tavistock launched the drug culture revolution in America to popularize and normalize social drug use. Through their record companies and advertising... You see, here's where I don't necessarily agree with this particular film. They did it, but the reasons for doing it... Yeah, get them hooked and keep it illegal. Keep it illegal so we can uh, we can make a lot more money off of it. Then if you grew it up, then if you had real freedom. You are a slave, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what you are. You are a slave. You are a debt slave. You are a debt slave here. I don't know why it's uh, so hard for anybody to understand. And and what they try to do, they, uh, we've already talked about them demonizing people. They're trying, they try to turn you against me because I've been telling you for 50 years now, legalized pot, legalized pot. I wrote about it in my novels, and I sent those novels out to publishers while I was in prison. They didn't accept it, because they are still, publishers are still, right now, today, scared to death of giving me any publicity. If everybody in America had a copy of this book, and re they read this book, and they went to my website and watched the, and, and read the whole total Protocols of Elders of Zion, all the way through number 21. You'd understand. You'd understand and, and you'd quit. Oh, he's a biker. Oh, he's a patriot. Oh, he's a Republican. Oh, he's a Democrat. Oh, he's a conservative. Oh, he's a liberal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, you know, oh, that guy's gay. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be around him. That guy smokes pot. I don't want to be around him. So let the gay guy go.